Hello Web3 TV friends, my name is Ornella Hernandez and today I am in Paris at the Paris Blockchain Week event. I'm here sitting with Shahaf, who is the co-founder and CEO of Koti and also the chairman of Uncaged. How are you today? I'm doing great, thank you. Is it your first time at Paris Blockchain Week? Absolutely not. Uh, in Paris Blockchain Week, that would be the second time okay. and maybe the 20th time in Paris overall. And what is unique or different about this year's edition of PBW? Well, first of all, I think Michael Lamar, the, the founder of this, is, uh, is doing an amazing work because this continuously grows both in quantity and in quality. Uh, there was also the AI Summit yesterday uh, for the first time, and, and that was pretty good as well. Yeah, so you attended. I wasn't able to go. Could you tell me a little bit about how it was? Um, about 1,500 people, uh, well-curated content and, and folks. You can feel the excitement about this new thing happening. And what are you looking forward to the most at this conference? So, oh, kind of like like always, we you know, Cody's been around forever uh, since 2017. So we you know we're meeting old friends here and partners um, as we are launching the new version of Cody, Cody V2. We uh, we now work with uh, new partners. So uh, you know, we're signing deals, meeting people. Okay. So you said since 2017 is forever, nine years. Is that what forever feels like in this space? <laughs> Yeah, it feels more than forever in this space. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about what Koti is and what you guys are prioritizing at the moment. Sure thing. So with Koti V2, we are building a privacy-centric Ethereum Layer 2. So everybody understands Ethereum Layer 2s. I don't think people understand privacy. And the best way to kind of like think about this is um, like, would you give me your phone and let me look at all your messages? Probably not, no. Oh, come on. You have nothing to hide. Why wouldn't you do that? Because privacy is is uh, such a basic right that people want to keep it, no matter if they have something to hide or they don't, right? It's, a, it's, it's actually protected by law. The reality is that on public blockchains, we just give away all the sensitive data every day. People, but isn't that the point of the ledger, to have like a public record of everything? No. The... Actually not. It, it's a it's a it's a popular uh, misconception. It's a it's a bug. It's not a feature. The fact that sensitive data is available on chain um, is not is a design flaw, which can be fixed and will be fixed. And even Vitalik Buterin uh, says that that is one of the things that needs to be fixed for massive adoption. I can ask the same thing about about the internet. Like, um, would the internet be better if when you connected to your uh, banking account, all this data become publicly available? Or would you be comfortable in posting on, know, on LinkedIn, your balance in your bank account, show all your messages? But you do that on chain. It, it doesn't add actually anything. It just makes you a target. So financial crime or MEV. It just means that serious adoption cannot take place because People will not feel comfortable, you know, putting their salary on chain, putting medical records on chain and all of that. So we need a way for blockchains to be verifiable, which I think is what you mean. And that is actually very important, but not endanger privacy. So hence along comes a, a thing called uh, confidential computing, which is what we offer with Code V2. Essentially, we're using uh, a new type of, of uh, technology called gobbling circuits. Doubling circuits. No. no. It's, it's, it's worse. It's garbling circuits. You garble. Garbling circuits. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the best way to describe it is, is um, let's say uh, you want to assemble a six pieces puzzle. And there are six people, each has a piece of the puzzle. And you want to compose the, the, the puzzle. You want to complete it. Uh, but nobody will show the other what he has. Oh, okay, okay. But... With gobbling circuits, you can actually do the computation to kind of like assemble this puzzle. It will be perfect, but nobody would know who owned what piece of the puzzle to complete it. Okay. And so the information is like distorted, like you can't properly see it's, it? It's encrypted. So when we say crypto, uh, uh, we, we're talking about, you know, uh, um, a technique around public private keys, da, 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 da. And what we have today is actually a way to verify that I signed a message, that you received a message. So, so that's crypto now. Crypto is not encrypted because you can't use encrypted data on chain because when you decrypt it, it just becomes publicly available. So what we do with Cody V2 is actually um, bring privacy to Ethereum. So it's the same 
Ethereum in many ways, same solidity, same everything. Um, but you can decide that this data will remain confidential, this computation will remain confidential, and that, that opens up you know, all sorts of things that you can now do uh, uh, on chain, everything from data management to uh, better DeFi, better identity management, a lot of cool things. So what other use cases would you personally like to see more of? So I, I try to think about this as capabilities that leads to use cases. So capability one is you can now finally store data on chain in an encrypted manner and use that data without decrypting. So anything, you know, because anything requires data, right? All apps require, a serious app requires uh, data. The second thing is confidential transactions. So I send someone something and to remain in the boundaries of law, you can say that I sent something to someone, so we, we know we're not financing terror or doing money laundering or whatnot, but the, what moved in that transaction remains confidential. And that is not just legal, it's actually the law. So you can do real world assets, CBDCs, stable coins, all types of payments with this. So. I think the best way to think about this when you're talking about use cases is kind of like what's not better with the ability to put something to, to add privacy to it uh, like you can choose if you want to do something privately or not but what's not better uh, with that so any use case will just be uh, uh, better the blockchain will remain transparent in a sense of like auditing trail etc but it will not expose your sensitive data Got it. Okay, I like that. So it's adding a privacy layer to everything. All right. And so let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the gaming world, since I know that you're the chair of Uncaged. What's going on right now with Uncaged? So uh, we just recently released the first game called Uncaged Soccer. Uh, we write it like the cool kids do. So it's like U N K J D. Yeah. Took me forever. I know. Um, and essentially, it's it's like a, um, you can think of it as like a strategy game. Uh, with action, but the theme is soccer. So kind of like Clash of Clans meets FIFA. Yeah, played on a chessboard. Okay. So it's very cool. Uh, the, the, um, the engagement rates are very high. Where can you play? You can just download it in, in iOS or Android. It's, a, it's an app, it's a mobile casual app. Uh, everybody can play it and people find it pretty addicting. Uh, so beware. Um, to that, the, the long-term goal for that is obviously Web3 aspects of it are, you know, ownership. So I own players, I own teams, etc. I win rewards, I use, I, I play in tournaments. But that's, I kind of like everybody would be doing that. What's new is um, the AI gaming aspect of it. So, so what's interesting? Um, all games data, every game that anybody has ever played in details, comes up in the form of logs that are put on chain. So essentially you can look at that data and then train an AI model to play the game for you. You're essentially building an agent. Now obviously building agents is difficult. It's you know only few can kind of like really do that. So we are offering no code tools to build agents to play the game. So anyone can do it. Anybody can do it. I mean most can do it. Uh, my mother still can't but you train agents and then agents play against agents right. and there's a tournament and it and essentially becomes a battle of, of AIs. And humans are there to play games and create data and then you know that data trains models, the models play against each other and then you have a better model and a better model because, hey, I lost, so I need to retrain my model with new data. So essentially, in, in the end, you have like amazing bots that can play games. And you can tokenize that. Like I'm now, I can now sell my agent to other players wanting to win games. So, so that's uh, where it's going. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. I like that concept. All right, now last question: What is your favorite and least favorite part about being in Paris or being in France? Hmm. Well, favorite will be that I just I think Paris is beautiful. It really is. Um, Least favorite part, uh, and I'm hope, I hope I'm not being uh, political, it's not easy uh, being an Israeli these days and, and travel. Uh, um, 
a lot of backlash. Uh, some of it just, some of it not, obviously. Uh, so it's just, um, I don't like um, not being able to answer freely where I'm from, right? So, so I do answer freely and, and just and cope with the results. But um, that's uh, that kind of saddens me these days. Well, thank you, Shaha, for your time. I hope that you do enjoy the conference and that it's a positive experience for you. And stay tuned for more interviews, everyone. <laughs>